star of our show is Ruff the Diamond Dog. Oh my gosh. Ruff is 100% natural. He came out of the ground like that. So many stories to be told in the patterns and the inclusions in these gorgeous gemstones. Yeah, you can't pass it that. No, no. <laughs> Hey everyone, we're at the 2022 Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and we have a really fun, exciting guest with us, Andrew Schlesinger. He's a sixth generation diamond dealer and I understand he has some pretty cool stuff for us today. I do, yes. Rebecca, if you would start us off. All right, I can do that, thank you. Oh my gosh, wow, we have a lot going on here. So these are an excellent place to begin. Okay. What we have here are diamonds embedded in kimberlite. And while diamonds don't grow in kimberlite, when they are forced to the surface, they do embed themselves in kimberlite. These are actually very rare to find these days because the current process of mining actually crushes the kimberlite. These are from the Mir pipe in Russia. The clarity on this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh so, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. We have some very cool forms of diamonds here as well. These are diamond cubes. The unit cell structure of every diamond is a cube. When I think of rough diamonds, I think of mackles or octahedra. I don't often see cubes. Correct, yes. Well-formed cube is actually one of the rarest forms of rough diamonds. <laughs> and you have a ton of them and right here. <laughs> we do have quite a bunch right here, yes. And these particular ones are found from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Interestingly, different shapes of diamonds are found at different depths of the earth. At some depths, you'll find more commonly circular diamonds. At some, you'll find the octahedras more commonly, and at some of the cubes. That is so cool. I love that. It tells you a little bit of a story of you know where it was. And as we know, every diamond is at least a billion years old, yeah. so there's a lot of stories in that. More commonly, people think of diamonds as octahedras. These are beautiful Australian octahedras. Yeah, look at that. Do you source from the Argyle mine? These are from the Argyle mine, yes. It has since closed in 2020, unfortunately. We've gotten a lot of fun material from there. Look at the luster on that. Obviously, diamond is known for its extremely high adamantine luster, yeah. but the, like actually, because of the color, almost from a distance, they look metallic. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Like Yeah, and there's a cool property in the Australian material. They have grooves in it, almost pock marks that give the light some kind of play on the surface there. And they're large. Yes, those are some nice sized <laughs> crystals. Those are nice crystals. <laughs> yep. So you're a diamond dealer. Mm -hmm. Do you mainly deal in rough diamonds? The history of our company is uh, six generations in the diamond business. My last name is Schlesinger. The etymology of that would be Schlesinger. Uh, which meant from Silesia. So my great, 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 great grandmother had a jewelry store in Silesia region. My grandfather moved to Antwerp to become a cleaver of diamonds, which was a highly sought after skill to be able to break a diamond uh, perfectly. perfectly. He heard Hitler speak in 1939, and he wanted nothing of what was coming, and ultimately came to America. Yeah. Wow, that is yeah. providential. Yeah. Yes, oh he, my was, he, he had some fortunate foresight for us. He was an industrial site holder in rough diamonds that were used to make tools. Later on, my father joined and continued that industrial business. But as we all know, synthetic diamonds have come around and pretty much taken over the industrial diamond market. So we had a nice, healthy stock of these really cool <laughs> diamonds that we had nothing to do with. And we partnered with a factory in India and have grown since then into uh, manufacturers of diamonds and collectors of unique and wonderful rough diamonds. Wait, that is very interesting that you are in both businesses. Yeah. I, would you say that's pretty unique? Yes, I think that the aspects and facets, if you will, of what I learned growing up was a different direction than most people would get coming into this business. Fascinating. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk about this bag mm -hmm. right here. So we have what I believe are diamond mackles? That's correct. Diamonds generally have one cleavage plane. Diamond mackles have two, so they've sort of twinned in, in their growth process. And mackles have a demarcation line where you can see the it'll go in the other here. direction where the twinning happens, yes. And that's a green diamond? And that is a green diamond. Is that natural? That is natural, oh yes. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. Green diamonds are green because of natural radiation in the earth. Green diamonds will have uh, distinct pockmarked green dots on the surface that give it its color. Okay, I actually didn't know that. Different colored diamonds have different reasons for their properties. Yellow diamonds are nitrogen. Brown diamonds are actually what they call a growth defect. Uh, in their internal crystal structure that bends the light a certain way to make them brown. If you take the whole amount of diamonds in 
the world, a lot of them are going to come in freeform shapes. And that's something that we really appreciate. We've dubbed these freeform shapes cloud spotting diamonds because we find a lot of fun shapes and everyone sees something different. Yeah. And that's what we have right here. here. Okay, so a few of these caught my eye. This one which looks to be two different colors. Yeah, bicolor diamond. That's probably from South Africa. Uh, that's where we definitely find the most of our bicolor diamonds. I have, I've or, never seen a bicolor diamond. Yeah. I, there's no way I've seen that. I also was attracted to this guy. It's another mackle, also from the Democratic Republic of Congo, from the skin tone. You can often tell where the diamonds come from. Because of the color? Uh, not the color, but the skin properties. So you can oh. see like there's, this is almost like a, a coating on top. There's actually gemmy material inside of here. I've never heard like the skin tone yep. of a diamond. That's Which is actual diamond as well. It's not that the skin is not diamond. Yeah. It's just a different, a, not the gemmy material yeah. that we're used to. I really like this one. That's a twinned yep. octahedra. Mm -hmm. Also from Australia. Wow, these are amazing. Do you have a favorite in here? Uh, my favorite is not in here, but might make a guest appearance. Mm. See. <laughs> Here's your next box of goodies. I, I'm loving these boxes. Oh my gosh, oh, look at that. So what we have here is a, a bunch of diamonds with a lot of cool inclusions. This is what we call a moonfire diamond. Explain that, because that caught my eye, because it has kind of that like, um, like a milkiness to it. Yeah, yeah, so it sort of has an opalescent effect to it, uh, almost. It's uh, got like an orangey fire to it. Like something like, like this we would call our salt and pepper diamonds. These are carbon inclusions. In this case, they have very cool banding. We wanted to bring out a little bit of the character of the stone, so we gently polished around the form of the original rough. The inclusions in the diamonds give it so much character. Like there's so many stories to be told in, in the patterns and the inclusions in these gorgeous gemstones that traditionally get overlooked in your typical Tiffany jewelry. I've actually seen a rise in popularity in the salt and pepper for engagement rings for that reason. Because of that uniqueness, it's a great way to give something like very specific with the inclusions to someone you love. If it ever got lost, you could identify it super easily. Very easily and visually, yeah. yeah. We have got to talk about these. Oh my, yes. So these are crystals from Zimbabwe. The inclusions in these diamonds are an actual optical effect in the form of a starburst. We have only found them so far in the market in material from Zimbabwe. We had to polish to open up the windows to see that effect, but sometimes you can actually see it in the rough when the stone wow. is very clear. So the inclusion is darker and it's making it look darker? or is or is that kind of the base of the diamond darker? The reason that brown diamonds have their color are, again, what they call a defect in the uh, crystal structure of the stone. What you have here is both that happening and the crystal structure that's causing this optical effect as well. Oh, it's not an inclusion. Right. Oh, it's the crystal structure. Yes. Oh, that is so cool. Mm -hmm. That is amazing. Okay, another bicolor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This one is from Russia. It's large. It's a 11 karat stone. You can see orange, yellow, green. Mm -hmm. And again, a stone like this is just too special in its raw form to manufacture. Yeah. You can't pass it, but. No, no. <laughs> and then. Um, That's a nice 18 karat belt buckle diamond. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that, folks. That's a keeper. Yep. <laughs> There are some inclusions in that. Mm -hmm. It has this kind of like, um, I don't know, you know what I'm talking about? It's yeah, kind of like totally. a powdered sugar. It's like a party going on yeah. inside the stone, yeah. <laughs> the uh, characteristics and the uh, inclusions in the stone can affect the fire, which is why you don't see the flash of color that you would see in a clean diamond. You'll find something more like fire play in a stone like this. Yeah, let's talk about that one. So this is an old cut stone. In today's typical stones, you'll find a distinct mathematical equation that returns to you the most fire. If you cut it just right, light will enter the stone from the top or the sides and return to you 97% of that light in different colors. And you'll see this flash of fire. In less well-cut stones, mm -hmm. uh, that fire will bleed out the bottom of the stone. So these older cut stones, you don't have as much fire play in them, but the character of the stones is bubbly and you don't 
get that so much anymore because no. everyone's trying to capture that fire, but they lose a lot of the other character of the stone when they do that. I prefer old mine cut. <laughs> There's just character there yeah. that I think you can't really replicate, and I think Diamond has enough fire where you can kind of sacrifice that a little bit yeah. to, for that cut. Yeah. And there's a place for both. Right. Like there's a whole world of diamonds out there. They're all special for their own reasons. Box number three. Box number three. Wow. Well, it looks like a little bunny. So you've uncovered our favorite diamonds now. <laughs> <laughs> Star of our show is Ruff the Diamond Dog. Oh my gosh. So Ruff the Diamond Dog is a 22 karat rough diamond from Botswana. Botswana is a very important mine as a conversation today has gone towards ethical mining. Botswana is one of the most ethical sources on earth. They give a lot back to their infrastructure and the rights of the citizens and the people that work around diamonds and the agriculture and the land around it. Ruff is a proud representative of that country. Ruff is adorable. <laughs> Ruff is 100% natural. He came out of the ground like that. No one has done anything to him to make him look this way. This is how he was born. <laughs> oh my god. Well over a billion years ago. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was thinking at least maybe there was some polishing or something. Nope. 100% natural. Okay. And this is Kitty the Carbon Cat, his friend. Kitty and the Carbon <laughs> Cat. Kitty is from Botswana, Botswana yes. Botswana yeah. really showing up the rest of the world. We have it in detail in our book here. How cute is that? We have animated our favorite diamonds and they go off in this book, Ruff's Diamond World. Oh my gosh, okay, how cute. And they tell their tale of diamond diversity. The protagonist of the book is D. Flawless, the diamond <laughs> dragon, <laughs> who thinks all diamonds should be D. Flawless. <laughs> what a villain. <laughs> but they end up friends in the end. So. Okay, good, okay, good. That is adorable. Thank you. Do you sell that? Yes, we do. It's, uh, it's on Amazon and it's on our website, roughdiamondworld.com. I love that. This is our elephant head, affectionately named Ganesh. Ganesh. Oh my gosh, I cannot get over that. <laughs> and all of these diamonds are 100% natural, have not been cut in this animal collection. Um, what about treated in, your, in this? There's no stones here that are treated. That is so special. <laughs> yes, I <it> is. love that. <laughs> Are any of these part of your personal collection or, like for me, I'm like, I'm like, I wouldn't give that up. Yes. That is so cool. Rough is not for sale. <laughs> yeah. <okay>. <laughs> the <laughs> entire animal collection and other very rare diamonds that we have are not for sale and I would actually love to get them in a museum to share with everyone. That is our ultimate goal in telling these stories, to share them with the world in a more proper venue because as Indiana Jones would say, they belong in a museum. Yeah. <laughs> I feel super fortunate to have touched this. Like that is amazing. And I think a lot of people would really benefit from seeing this collection. And we have one more box to share with you. One more box, okay. thank you. Whoa, that fire just <laughs> screams at you. Okay, so these are, it looks like all round brilliant. These are traditional round brilliant cuts in what we have called our salt and pepper diamond material. We came up with the term salt and pepper about 15 years ago, and we actually copyrighted the term, not because we wanted to be the only ones to use it, but we wanted everyone to be able to use it in the marketplace, and we didn't want anyone to claim it as their own. No, it no, is no. protected for everyone to use as a classification of diamond. But please uh, okay. spill it out and uh, play with it. It's decadent and fun totally to play with, di with diamonds oh in your hands like that. Oh my gosh. I, I feel so conflicted because when you see the, the round brilliant, you understand why it's such a popular cut. They're beautiful. Of what they it have does. their place, absolutely. <laughs> Do you have a favorite type of diamond? Rough diamonds are in my history and my nature, so my favorites are going to be these unique shapes that present themselves to us. So on this channel, at the end of every episode, we take a closer look. So we pick our favorite from the assortment on the table, and we show it to the viewers. I know what mine is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd love to hear what yours is first. <laughs> okay, rough is just like, you just can't compare to that. I have a liking for this because of the unique way the crystal structure has impacted this. I love the bicolor and I love the green mackle, but rough just <laughs> far and away takes, I have takes to, the cake. I have to agree with you. So let's take a closer look.
Andrew, thank you so much for coming on the channel. We all feel very fortunate to see these. I know that our viewers will love them. If you want to learn more about diamonds or any other gemstone, go to gemstones.com, our new website where you can watch videos, read articles, and learn all about all the gemstones you love. And if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos. Thanks for watching.